Comment ça va? That means how you doing. Me, I'm Tinu, and welcome to Craftastrophe. Man, I really hope that you like chicken, because that's what we're doing today. That's right, we're going to sculpt up a chicken. Well, actually, it's a rooster. And this is the kind of guy who likes getting into scraps and is always getting arrested. We're going to get him some clothes and give him some feathers and get him painted up and looking real spiffy so that he looks good in his mugshot. If this sounds good to you, then let's get our craft on. And away we go. This is my concept drawing for the Bantam Bruiser. He's a boxer who in his glory days was a championship contender, but now he works in a mechanics auto shop. His name is Bob, and he has anger issues. Don't be like Bob. Once again, I'm sitting here high and dry with zero introduction from you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my daddy. Wow, that's it? Yep. Anyway, uh, you missing a golden opportunity with the name uh, because of Danny's fried chicken? Come on. You've already named one of my characters Danny because of the fried chicken. Well, I didn't exactly have all the facts and I didn't know that you were going to be sculpting a chicken. Dems the brakes. Uh, I was really nervous to try the chicken because I've never done feathers. But I made this little tool out of polystyrene and the feathers came out alright. News flash that looks like a crow, not a chicken. Uh, it's a chicken. Coulda fooled me. And his name is Bob. Horses the water. So I'm making the chicken's comb. That's that weird fleshy mohawk that sits on top of a chicken's head. You know, I'm glad that you're making this rooster a boxer and that he's got attitude because when I was a chicken farmer, that you was- You were never a chicken farmer. Do you know, I farmed chickens for half my life. This is the first I hear of it. That's because you don't have the slightest interest in your own family's history. It reads like a bad tabloid story. It's colorful. I'm gonna talk about the rooster because this is a crafting video. So I made the comb and these other fleshy features on the chicken which have this sort of pebbly texture. So I spent a lot of time getting that on there. And this thing is called a waddle. I made this little tool with some foam on the end, and this allows me to push the texture into the back side of the waddle without destroying the texture that's on the front. Don't smoke, kids. It's a nasty habit. I wonder if that's a Cuban. I doubt it. He buys them at Winn-Dixie. <sighs> So I made an armature for him, a chicken, armature, aluminum foil to bulk him up. Is it just me or is it freezing in here? Now that the bacon bond is on the aluminum foil, I'm adding sheets of Sculpey and then just blending them in with this ball stylus. You know, early I was trying to tell you about when I was a chicken farmer and why I'm happy that you're making this rooster with a bad attitude. Yeah. Well, this one reminds me of this one rooster that we had, minus the cigar. But uh, he would attack me every time I went to try to feed him. Now, you would think because I'm holding a big bag of chicken feed that he'd be happy or even excited to see me. But no, he'd just go for it right away. He was quick like the wind and mean as can be. He chased me out of the coop a couple of times uh, when I was wearing shorts. Yeah, well that would upset anyone. I had to run for my life. God help me if I would have tripped. Who knows what would have happened. God knows. Anyway, I kind of tuck and roll James Bond style under my truck, except I hurt my foot. Yep, sounds like Bond. And all the lady chickens are practically fanning themselves because they're so in love with the rooster for chasing me off. They freaking love Lining up at the coop to have his babies. Super Sculpey, making him an undershirt. And that's when I made the realization that I probably didn't want to be in the chicken biz anymore. Plus there was a pile of fire ants under the truck. It was a very long night. I'm not even really sure what to say about that. So I laid a couple of sheets of Sculpey as his pant legs and you can kind of just push it together so that you get a nice seam. I'm adding these little rolls of clay, kind of blending them in. They're gonna be the creases on the pants. And that's that weird little button that no one knows what it does. Hey, why is this clay gray and the other one's pink? 
Hey, that's a good question. This gray one is cosplay and the pink one is super sculpy. Now, the reason that I'm doing the shirt and these other uh, parts that are protruding in cosplay is because the cosplay is flexible. And even though these pieces are thin, it's not going to break. Now, I'm happy with the way the shirt eventually came out, but I think I need to do more research into the actual ways that clothing is put together. Really look at the patterns. I think that's going to help me out a lot in the future. I tried to keep the clothing seams in mind as I did this, but I ended up having to patch up a few areas. And here I'm cutting in some of the wrinkles. So I cut them in kind of hard and then smooth them out with my finger. And you can use whatever tool works to help you get this effect. Add some of the seam lines back. More feathers. <laughs> now, will a rooster sometimes attack you? Yes. Are they aggressive? Yeah, they fight a lot. Just look up some videos on YouTube and you'll see what I mean. Now, I saw a picture of this monster when I was a kid in a book and it really captured my imagination. When you realize how powerful some of the birds that we still have around today are, like the secretary bird, which is basically a land-dwelling eagle with giant long legs that runs around killing snakes at will, or maybe the harpy eagle which has gigantic claws actually its claw is bigger than a bear's claw i guess my point here is that roosters come from a long line of fighters so i guess that's what inspired the bantam bruiser <laughs> after the hands were baked i was able to come back and do some filing and trimming and basically get the hands in a better shape. They can be a bit tricky to get just right when the clay is still soft. So this is one way to go about it. Bonus, you can kind of smooth out the sanding by just adding bacon bond. Man, I'll tell you when he's rolling up his sleeves, it means watch out. Oh, now this right here is my favorite part, and I'm gonna tell you why. You gave him a mullet. Now, Tinu, when you were a kid, you had the longest, most beautiful mullet I've ever seen in my life. It was embarrassing. Not to me. It was like a luxurious lion's mane of hair. Yeah, a redneck lion. Be that as it may, it was a sight to behold. Everywhere we went, people stared. I don't think that was a good thing. Well, you won the Little Mr. Mullet competition three years in a row. Daddy, I really wish you wouldn't... I would only let your mother use Pantene to wash your hair because it kept your hair moisturized and repaired split ends. You were like one of those weird pageant moms, but with more testosterone and less hairspray. Tinu, if you go into one of those competitions timidly, those pageant moms are gonna eat you alive. They can smell fear. Mm, okay, if you look up at the screen, you can see I whittled a little piece of balsa wood that someone bought me from my wish list. Yay. Thank you. And I'm using that as the basis to make them a little crescent wrench. Now, Dad, I've always been a little unclear, and trust me, I'll probably be sorry for asking this, but how did the mullet situation get resolved? Well, the head of the PTA said that she was going to kick you out of school unless you got your hair cut. It was a trip hazard and uh, it was giving the bullies an unfair advantage. They were, they were using it as leverage. Yeah, dark days. And I told him, I said, you can cut his hair when I'm dead. And I'm not planning on dying anytime soon. But? Yeah, well, that night I was thinking and I realized that if you were going to be homeschooled, that uh, you would be home all the time. And uh, we got your hair cut the next morning. Way to hold to your scruples. Tinu, I know when I'm outflanked and I can back down. But I tell you what, you know who stayed home and watched football instead of chaperoning at the prom? 
me. So who got the last laugh? You know they still call me Little Mr. Mullet even into my twenties. It's your legacy, new. Embrace it. Hey, you probably don't know this, but my wife, she paints. And she did this painting which fits in really well with the sculpture that we're working on today. Is it just me, or does this guy remind anyone else of that old video game, Joust? Now, I really love the way my wife does lettering. Just the way she outlines it. I just think it looks so good. So this is Devil Chicken, El Gallo del Diablo. You really need to work on your Spanish. Yeah, you're probably right.